Hey everybody, I decided to make this video because a lot of you like knowing why a champion is being buffed and why a champion is being nerfed as well as individual system changes and things like that. So the last video I did on this went over pretty well. In actual patch review videos, I don't have the time because I don't spend five hours on them to go through each champion's individual patch history to that led to a buff or led to a nerf, item changes, meta systems, things like that. I, of course, look at win rates all the time, I look at item changes, I look at patch notes all the time, and that gives me a sort of unique uh, perspective, and because I've been playing this game for 10 years, I have a unique area to just sort of tell you why things are happening. Now, uh, in my last video, I got to these, they, they do two patch previews. They do one where they don't list the changes, and then the next day they list the changes. Unfortunately for this uh, patch cycle, they have only done the one where they list the changes. I don't like doing that, because they can... Uh, change nerfs, change buffs, add new things, and do all that stuff until patch day. Until patch day in the actual patch notes, that's the only time that you actually know what's going in. So putting out a video talking about these specific changes before they happen can be obsoleted in a week. So we're just going to be talking, and hopefully by the end of this video we can tell you why things are happening, and even if you might not like it, even if you might not agree with it, you might get the perspective, the direction that the changes are coming from. So, without further ado, everybody make sure to like, everybody make sure to subscribe, everybody make sure to leave a comment down below. These things all help me, and I do listen to all the feedback and things like that, and they help me make these videos better. Likes and, uh, likes and things like that also help me a lot in making these videos more popular. So I thank you in advance, and I appreciate you for your help. So, without further ado, we're going to go over Samira. Samira, why is Samira being buffed? Well, Samira got buffed, let me uh, scroll up here and look here. Samira got buffed uh last season she got buffed this season and now she's being buffed again why is she being buffed so much well samira basically got balanced on shield bow shield bow has only been getting nerfed um for a very long time and uh unfortunately because it's only getting nerfed samira who is 100 balanced on shield bow keeps getting buffed to try to compensate for it now the problem here is that they've balanced samira pretty hardly on shield bow her um, Q gets less lifesteal, her ultimate gets less lifesteal, it only gets it at 66.6 effectiveness. She's not that tanky, she lost I think like 70 base HP a little bit, or a, a long time ago, but yeah, so basically Samira, um, she gets nerfed because Shield Bow gets nerfed, and she's imbalanced around Shield Bow. So that, that's basically what's going on. Um, we can, if I, if I pull this up right here, pull up U.GG, we can see, um, if we look into bot lane, Samira has fallen down to a 46% win rate, uh, the 11th highest pick rate. There are a lot of people who like playing Samira, and that's why her pick rate remains somewhat decent, despite her massively shit on win rate. She unfortunately is not a champion like Aphelios. You can see Aphelios's pick rate and win rate goes up higher the higher rank you get. Samira's goes down because she gets worse because people know that she's really bad right now. So we're buffing Samira. That's basically the, the, the gist of it. Shield Bow get nerfed, Samira get buff. Kennen. So what's going on with Kennen? Kennen is somewhat sort of kind of popular. Kind of. Like he's 37th. I think as you go up the ranks, he gets a little bit more popular. A little bit, I, I, I guess. Maybe not. Um, uh, no, he gets a tiny bit more popular with the high ranks. Um, the thing is, right now, most people are only doing Holebreaker, which, spoilers, is getting nerfed on range champions on Kennen. So, um, Holebreaker Kennen is like the only way he's played, and that's getting nerfed. So what they're doing is they're, they're just buffing him. That's it. He's just, he's been bad for a while. Uh, if I look into his patch history, they tried to do some janky things with him, I think it was last season they did? Uh, let me look into that. I think, I'm pretty sure it was last season. Yeah, last season they tried to they buffed his W, then they buffed his Q, then they nerfed his Q practically back to where it used to be. Um, the right the thing with Kennen is when Kennen's good, he tends to be overbearing and dominate the entire laning phase and have very little counter picks and just sort of beat everyone. When Kennen's bad, he tends to not be able to dominate the laning phase, and then that's it. That's all he does. Ride can't seem to buff him in a way that doesn't just instantly make him underpowered or overpowered. So, yeah. It would, yeah. I'm not going to make a prediction, but my prediction is that he will get nerfed after this. 
Seraphine, okay. So Seraphine's actually an interesting and funny one to talk about, okay? Now, oh, just just as a forward, I use these videos. These these are more of a longer freeform video. That's what I've been doing lately. So some of you guys have been complaining that I get a little bit off topic and make too many jokes, but um, shut up. So Seraphine is actually uh, if I let me go to Plat Plus so I can get some good uh, matches played for this patch. Seraphine is actually one of the best bot laners in the game right now, but not as a support. See, Seraphine's support is fucking terrible. <laughs> Surfing as a support is awful. However, Seraphine is a bot lane AP long range poke nuker is pretty damn good, particularly with some of these other champions. Uh, and uh, the issue is that the people who play the bot laners, they don't like playing Seraphine. So even if your average Vayne player, your average Draven player, your average Jin player, they play bot lane they aren't gonna be liking playing seraphine because um they just aren't into that maybe the ezreal players would like playing seraphine but not not the actual bot laners so the problem is um riot wants to shift seraphine out of bot lane and back into support and out of mid lane and back into support and we can see even in mid lane if i could find her yeah in mid lane, she has like no pick rate either. See, the problem is Seraphine's really only popular to support players. And she sucks in support really hard right now. And that's kind of a problem with the champion's identity. To put this into perspective, this would be like, even in support, Swain tends to be more popular than Seraphine is in the, the bot carry role. And Swain in support has kind of filled a niche He's bad right now, but that's because he's been over nerfed to hell. But it's kind of the same, but even an exacerbated issue. Yeah. So, yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to push Seraphine back into support and away from bot lane. Ari is getting nerfed. Okay, this one really shouldn't even be surprising. She's just been monstrously overpowered for like a month now. She just wins. The thing is, her damage isn't particularly too high. Her mobility isn't particularly insane compared to you know modern day champions her ultimate is pretty much on par right so she doesn't have insane mobility it's high mobility no doubt but it's not the insane mobility of season two uh her damage is eh, about average maybe on the low end potentially um she has to hit her cues so there's nothing particularly broken about her in particular it's just that she's overpowered Sometimes champions can be just overpowered. And, like, if we look at Akali, Akali could be underpowered, and she would still be broken. Akali is fine, but she's overpowered. She's, she's, there's nothing broken about this kit. The numbers are just too high. So they're nerfing her. Because the numbers are, are way, way, way too high, in fact. Okay, Master Yi. Oh, boy. So, okay. What they're trying to do with Master Yi, and I'm not sure I... I agree with what they're doing what they're doing isn't gonna I, I i don't know they've been updating the numbers a little bit but they're trying to push mastery into an on hit build and away from an ad build so the problem with mastery and i went over this um a bit ago uh master yi is fine slash underpowered at the higher ranks I, I would say he's a little bit underpowered at the higher ranks at the mid ranks he's balanced he's fine but then when we go all the way down to the old ranks category, uh, Master Yi is very overpowered. So remember, once again, I say this every time, all ranks take in every game because there's like 300,000 silver games and 300 challenger games. The silver games vastly dominate the stats and all ranks is basically going to be your lower ranks, okay? These are going to be your average players, let's call it that. To your average low ranker player, yeah, Master is pretty overpowered. So they're trying to do a shift here, and, I'm, and, and if my camera's blocking the numbers, don't mind it. I, I kind of don't even want to be showing these numbers. I wouldn't if I didn't have to. So don't mind these numbers. They've, they've adjusted these Master Yi numbers. They'll probably adjust these Seraphine numbers. They'll adjust them. Don't worry. Um, they, they've iterated on the Master Yi things a few times. I'm sure they'll iterate it on it again. And, uh, yeah. So up next, we have uh, Gwen. Now, Gwen, um, let me, 
I need to I need to find something real quick here. It's only gonna take one second. I'm about here, and here we go. Okay. Um, Gwen as of now is 55% pick ban, which honestly actually isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Jinx is at 52%. Gwen is at 55%. Trinomir is at 56%. So actually. I'm not sure I understand this one. Because Gwen is decisively underpowered at the low ranks. She's a little bit overpowered at the high ranks, but her win rate doesn't go that high. Trindomir, I literally just saw Trindomir has a higher pick ban. Not by a lot, but by a little. But a massively higher win rate and pick rate at the high ranks. So... I actually don't understand this one. I, I thought she was like near 100% pick ban in like the LCK and shit. Um, hmm. I'm not honestly sure about this one. I, I guess Raid just doesn't like Gwen right now? I actually have nothing else to say. I don't know, guys. Um, yeah. Huh. So, Zin Zhao, though. Okay, I can tell you Zin Zhao. Xin Zhao is up to an 85% pick ban. He's pretty high in the pick ban. Uh, when we look in jungle, he, at the high ranks, is high pick. When we look at the low ranks, he's high pick. He's not particularly problematic in solo queue, but he's particularly problematic in competitive play. He is going to eat a pretty decent nerf. Now, I think the reason they're nerfing him is because his ultimate makes him too tanky in team fights. Same thing with Gwen. One has to wonder why they decided to nerf all Bruiser items because Xin Zhao had his ultimate change to make him really tanky in team fights. But now he, he okay, I, I don't know. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, I would be dead honest. It seems like they're nerfing Gwen just because she's right next to Xin Zhao. And maybe the idea was, oh, Xin Zhao's ultimate makes him too tanky in team fights, and Gwen's W makes her too tanky too, so let's nerf both of them at the same time. And that's probably a good idea. The nerfs they're doing, I'll, I'll actually say these ones. So they're going to nerf the attack range on her E. I think that's a good idea. They're also nerfing her ability to clear the jungle by nerfing her uh, jungle monster damage. These are good ideas, but my worry here is they're eventually going to have to buff her, and what are they going to buff on her? Because this champion doesn't really do anything. Like, she's just a stat check. She's just a ball of damage and healing. So, my worry is that when they inevitably buff this champion up, and I'll save all of this for the actual patch review when I get over it, my worry is, what are they going to buff in the future to make up for this? And then we have Holebreaker. Holebreaker is getting nerfed on ranged champions. This one is actually really easy to explain. So, do you see over here Graves, the number one pick champion? Do you see how he's got Holebreaker and 85% pick rate on his rush? Um, Graves is very strong. Graves is one of those champions who's typically balanced at a 48% win rate, and he's typically balanced in top lane at like a 47 to 46% pick rate. Don't ask why, most people just can't seem to do the extraordinarily easy task of right clicking the minion wave and pushing until they have an item and outscale their opponent. But that's just how it's always been. So he's got a 48, 49, no, no, it's a 49, nearly 50% win rate. And he's the number one pick champion. And he's rushing Holebreaker. And there's not really a whole lot of gameplay or counterplay. He's literally just right clicking the minion wave until he pushes. And then he outscales. And then he buys Holebreaker. And then he pushes everyone down and wins. Akshan is doing the same thing. The recent Akshan nerves hurt his pick rate a lot, but his win rate didn't go down that much. Now, Akshan is also getting popular off, you guessed it, Holebreaker rushing. So, uh, it's becoming a bit of a problem. So, Holebreaker is getting nerfed on ranged champions. Will they turn this into an all champion nerf, considering Holebreaker is being rushed on a lot of top laners? I don't know. But for now, we can tell you that yes, it's being nerfed on ranged champions. And that's these patch notes. That's why things are happening, that's what things are happening. I'm. As compared to the last one, I actually just straight up do not agree with some of these. But uh, that's what's going on, at the very least. Gwen is um, 
Gwen's just really frustrating and hard to fight, I guess. Maybe she's becoming more of a niche pick lately. Maybe it's like really popular this week and it wasn't last week. I don't fucking know. But there you go. That's what's happening. So uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it, everyone. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Uh, special shout out to all, sh sh shout out. Blah, blah, blah. Special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you all. I appreciate all of you greatly. And remember, you can continue to support videos like these for as little as $3 a month. For the rest of you, I appreciate you for being here. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. And have a great rest of your day.